Welcome to the sixth episode in a series where I'm trying to make high quality PCBs using a cheap CNC router. In the last episode, we finally had some success in making a single sided PCB. I definitely recommend you check that out if you missed that episode. It's really worth a watch and it's one of the key episodes of this series. Anyway, sitting in isolation for a week or so with COVID gave me plenty of time to think about various things that I could do to improve the process. And specifically the method to lay the UV resin coat was bugging me. So in this episode, I'm gonna look at a way to improve the method for laying this UV resin coat to the PCB. And as always, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, thumbs up, if you like what you see. Anyway, enough with the intro, let's get straight to it. So carrying on a little bit from that last episode, uh, obviously we're going to go into making some double-sided surface mount boards. Before I actually get into that, I had a few other ideas. It's probably not great to sort of change course halfway through, but. I wanted to explore a couple of those ideas, so I'm going to share that with you here. One of the things is that uh, I had actually seen uh, the application of the UV resin layer uh, being done with a silk screen uh, set. This was again on a Wegster, I think they did it. So I was interested to see if that might be a little bit easier of a method to apply the layer of, um, of resin. I have no idea. Uh, so anyway, I went off and bought myself some bits and pieces to do that. I've got this uh, this setup here, which is basically a ring with some real silkscreen mesh. Uh, it's a 150 whatever they call it, <laughs> grain mesh, 150 mesh. And uh, the ring is just this uh, cheap, colourful embroidery hoop. So I don't know if that's going to be any good or not, but I'm going to give it a go just to see if it's going to be easier to apply that. And you can see the package of the mesh here. It's just a, a, I bought a big chunk of that. So all up, it's around about fifteen US dollars for the for the uh, silk screening kit, uh, including I bought this little squeegee thing from a from a dollar store. So it's around about I don't know, probably eighty US cents or something like that. So hopefully I'll be able to apply with this. So so what I'm thinking of actually doing is a couple of things. One is obviously to, to put the layer on to see if that layer is usable to to burn and obviously uh, lay down etc. But I had another idea as well and it's it's all to do with um, how do I can do the silk screen a little bit better. So I had this idea that I could lay down an entire layer of white and different to the uh, the plastic I can remove this before exposure and I can move the PCB to the to the laser and actually expose the pattern with the laser on the CNC. Now I have no idea if that's going to work. Apparently those lasers in those CNCs are 450 nanometers and it seems that these cure at around about 350 to um, 400 nanometers. So I don't know if that's going to be close enough or I mean I couldn't find good data on it and I'm probably sure if I bothered to spend a little bit more time researching I'd find out a little bit more about it but I'm too lazy to do that. And here's a laser that I, I'm not a laser, I UV exposure LED lamp which I bought some time ago for just for trying to set up uh, clear resin and this thing is absolutely useless I can I could never get it to really harden anything so I think it's I think it's a joke basically but anyway these are the sort of things that you see and, and this says here uh, UV whatever whatever uh, 365 so I don't know if that means it's 365 nanometers or what anyway so in order to do that uh, silk screen type um, layer and exposure with a laser, I bought a big chunk of this white uh, UV resin. So that's going to be good for doing the silk screening work um, with the white lettering. But uh, it might also be good for actually making white PCBs. So if you're making a PCB which is uh, a PCB a part of a, a LED light system, you want to have good reflective surface um, around that as well. So. I haven't obviously made a PCB, obviously I'm not sure if I can be able to burn it off and, and do as well as I did with the green stuff or not, but I suspect it's going to work. So here's another option here as well. I also wanted to try the red, but I haven't bought the red yet, so it is what it is. So following on from that sort of thinking as well, I was thinking that maybe I could lay down a green layer, take it off, and then actually expose a, um, the, the, the etch pattern directly on the board. With, so instead of burning it off, I could actually expose it on the board, just like the silk screen, using the laser. And that's a pretty cool idea, and, and I wanted to test it out. But I'm having trouble figuring out how to get the software to export the correct mirror files and 
set it up in a way to do it. So I think I'm going to pass on that for now. I'll just focus on doing what we did before with the etching for the minute. And I think the testing with the silk screen will show us, you know, what sort of, if it's even possible to actually expose it with the laser and what sort of resolution we might be able to get with that. So with the silk screen, I really had two thoughts. I think you saw in my prior episode what I was doing, actually burning a slot into the resin layer. Um, so I would lay down a green la resin layer and I would b burn in a slot and then I would lay in uh, the resin. Now I was having a bit of trouble cleaning off the unwanted resin, which is why I'm not really enjoying that process. And that's why I really thought that maybe this is another way to do it. So anyway, join along, see me fall on my face again or have some success. You never know, could go either way. So this is the first time I'm doing this. You, you're gonna enjoy the scene with me. I've got this actually, this PCB uh, resin side up because obviously it's a single sided board and just a little bit of double sided tape here to stop it from sliding around while I do the work. So let's get into it. So the reason I'm applying this directly to the board first instead of just pushing through the silk screen is because I really want to have a good uh, surface contact. I don't want to have anything floating. So I believe, <laughs> just believe, that doing this will give better surface adhesion. Obviously I don't have anything to back that up, but I don't care. It goes on really well. Just using this uh, spatula even gives a pretty good result with this stuff. This is really thick, this stuff, very viscous. Is that the right word? I think so. <laughs> now for the big guns. Dun, dun, dun. It's gonna be meaningful or meaningless. Here we go, guys. No idea what's going on here. Uh, really pushing pretty hard. Ooh, look at that, is it gonna work? I have no idea what to do here. Pull it off quick. Oh wow, look at that. That's awesome. I reckon that is gonna work fine. Anyway, I really like it. It looks really good. And this rubber spatula, this is awesome. Love it. So my next trick is to get it on the laser. Now I don't have any idea about what sort of laser settings I should use. I, uh, you know, we, we use 60% to burn, so I currently have it at 10%. And I suspect that's going to be maybe even too much, but I, I need to start somewhere. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be a failure, but I mean, a thousand just seems crazy too much. So I'm going to do it anyway. I just like a challenge. So. Yeah, that's too much. Smell it. All right. Oh, you can even see it's burning on there. Let me move that out of the way and you'll see it. Look at that. That's too much. Let's try and edit this file. And I'll drop it down a little bit. A lot. Uh, so it says 1,000. How about we go down to 100? That's pretty low. And we'll try it again. Uh, we'll move it 10 mil to the right. Uh, reset our home. Pause. Well, now we're not smoking so much. So it might be a bit better. So I managed to clean off the screen here, okay, with a toothbrush and some alcohol. It was not that easy, but not that hard, but as you can see, I'm using quite a lot of alcohol to do it, so as I said, I'm not really sure if it's a great idea. I also noticed that this sheet has this fold on it here, which I noticed when I made it, uh, there was a fold point on it, so I'm not really sure. Maybe I should have just avoided the fold point on the, uh, on the sheet, because, you know, in the package, it's obviously all folded up like that, so... 
yeah, anyway, something to take a mental note about. So this is all done over here. I don't know. And see, oh yeah, you can just see. I probably, you probably can't see it on the camera, but you can just see that something has happened. And hopefully it's a good thing. So let's get it into this. Well, obviously we've got this alcohol here now, so we'll get in there and see if we can scrub it off. What do we say, guys? Something on here or something not on here? Leave it in the comments now. I don't know why people say that. It's such a stupid thing. Like, nobody's going to write in the comments now, right? Well, we'll see. Nothing. <laughs> so I don't know what that is. Is that just not enough exposure time? Well, over here in there we have something which I expose more. And seems to be something on there. Maybe it's just a lack of exposure time. Do you reckon we should do it again? God, I'm not that patient. Seriously. 100 leaves, nothing. 1,000 lifts, something. Ah, I don't like it. Nah, it's a waste of time. All right, stick this one in the fail bin, guys. Fail. Okay, for the next trick, we're going to try to go back to basics, and we're going to try and coat this board. By the way, I've had a couple of different thoughts about how also to coat these boards. You know, you don't want to have too many processes, it gets complicated, whatever. So, I think the silk screen is still within the scope of being a reasonable process. Obviously, there's another process where you can actually put some in the middle and you can uh, spin coat it, which is a high, high RPM spin coat. They, I've seen some other guys do that for surface uh, preparation of semiconductors and a few other bits and pieces, but I don't know. It, I'm not sure if it's going to work, and it just seems like something else to make, so let's try to keep it simple. Let's try to get it done. So this is quite good because I actually have some control over the amount of material I'm using. And one good thing about this green, terrible EV coat is that it doesn't set up very quickly. So you've got plenty of time to, well, do what I'm doing, which is mess around until you feel happy with it. And I tell you what, in my personal opinion, this is working spectacularly well. Just can't believe it, how good it is. All right, guys, here we go. Do. Oh my God! I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but that is awesome. Look at this. This is heaven. Dun -dun -dun. Yeah, I think I found the new way to coat PCBs. So I'll stick it in the UV exposure, and we will have. Pretty much a perfect surface. So a great thing about being able to not have to use that glass base and all of that uh, big base everything is that the rotisserie works so this means I'll get a much even much more even exposure. You can actually see there's like two circles one here and one at the back there and they actually have a different amount of power exposing on the uh, on the surface so it's sort of you see those circles after the exposure when it's stationary so Spinning it should hopefully give us a, a better exposure result as well. It might be even a bit quicker too, I suspect. So, elephant in the room time first. My new method to create the white graphics and text was a total failure. You saw me using this big white bottle of UV resin for this test, but actually for the PCBs I've been making so far, I've been using this super fast curing UV resin. The problem I've been facing, however, is trying to push the resin into these gaps created by the laser and then wiping the surface clean while not wiping out the embedded resin. Now I've tried various techniques including partial UV exposure but the result is either too little resin left in the gaps or too much resin that's left on the surface like, like in this case here you can sort of see it there. Anyway it's a total pain to clean this resin off once it really hardens up. So I know I'm going to suffer this for a little while longer yet, but I'm still hoping for some type of epiphany or something that will deliver me the ultimate solution, but I'm still waiting for that to come. Now looking to the big success story, however, it turns out that using the silk screen to coat these boards worked out really, really well. 
And after doing this process for a couple more times since then, not only have I gotten a little bit better at it, I now fully realize just how good this process really is. Applying the resin is so much easier than using the glass and the plastic sheets. No more worrying about air bubbles, no more cutting my hands on the glass, and you can fully inspect the coating before actually exposing it to the UV. If there are any defects, then simply just lay down the silk screen, go over it again, easy as that. There's also much, much better control over applying the resin exactly where you want it on the surface. And nearly no resin is wasted. Any excess is easily returned to the bottle afterwards. And cost-wise, I would say that it's not expensive at all, really. Even the glass and the plastic sheet method I was using still had a cost. I've also discovered that it's really no problem at all to reuse the silk screen multiple times. You need to use a couple of tissues and a little bit more IPA to clean it, but it's definitely worth doing. And of course, the finished result is something else too. We can now get a usable coating across the entire board. The coating thickness is now very consistent and even thinner than what I could achieve before. Not only does this mean I'm using less resin, but it also allows for less laser power, which should allow for a longer life for your laser. And finally, but something you will need to wait for the next episode to see yourself, after laying down the second coat of UV resin to finish the board, the result looks very much like a professionally manufactured board, much more so than this sort of glossy flat finish that I was getting before. Anyway, if you want to see what that looks like, then I hope you'll join me then. So I'll see you then.